Well, there's the E21 and then there's the E30. It's the second 3 Series that was ever produced. It, was, it went into production in Europe in 1983, so there's a full 10 years of production for this car. In my case, when I started looking for BMWs, I gravitated toward the 1991. The 1991 Coupe is the last coupe that they made in the, in the 3 Series uh, E30 model. The 318iS is the baby M3. It doesn't have as much horsepower or as much torque. It only puts out about 143 horsepower. But as a singular model, it was only produced for one model year and only came with a five-speed transmission. It was difficult to sell because it cost about $22,000, which was a little bit more than a GTI. It was the spiritual successor of the 2002. And of course, it has everything that you'd want in a 2002, full-size spare, 15-inch wheels, power steering, windows that roll up and don't make noise, five-speed, air conditioning that, that cools more than your right elbow. It also has a blower motor that you can fix in about 20 minutes instead of about 20 weeks. I found it to be a much more practical vehicle. My name is Delia Wolf, and I drive a 1991 BMW 318iS. I found this 318iS down in Aptos, down by Santa Cruz. And the car was somewhat sad and, and a bit neglected, but I truly fell in love with it because it reminded me about my 2002, my BMW 2002 and my TII. And those cars were the cars that I grew up on. Those were the cars I loved first. I actually work on 2002s pretty much every day. I work at a shop part-time in San Rafael. Honestly, when the day is done, I want to get in my E30 and I want to drive. I had a Scirocco Firebird Trans Am. I had Toyota Corolla GTS, uh, and I still remain enthusiastic about the 2002 and the E30. I can't think of a better car to get me into town, down the road, and I get the right amount of uh, satisfaction from taking it out on a back road and, and throwing it into a corner every once in a while, because I, I dearly love living here in Marin County where we have all these beautiful roads and the chance to go out and drive on them. My dad loved cars. He didn't really have a hot rod, but he loved cars and he loved driving them around. And when he worked on his projects at home, I would help him. I developed kind of a natural passion for it, and that's all we did. I built model cars and I hung around my friends and all they did was talk about cars. Well, the E30 has its own cult following that the 2002 does. People found that you could modify them with very little money and that the cars were durable. And there's all kinds of uh, places to exercise your passion. Every facet of racing seems to have a place for the E30. never get tired of driving it, I never get tired of looking at it. It's got that cult following that the BMW 2002 had, uh, seems to have crept over into the E30 model. It has 327,000 miles on it. I pride myself in my ability to take care of my cars. I think that that comes from my real love of cars and, and because it's my only car, I don't have to worry about maintaining a fleet like, uh, well, some of my friends have five or six cars. The combination of German engineering, quality of manufacture, is just unsurpassed. I think they broke the mold when they, when they did the A30. I have to admit, I've, I've got kind of a jaded view in, in favor of the A30. And I think that when you choose your cars, you should choose them carefully. And if it's not the right car for you, don't keep it. I made a very, very good decision in 2008 when I purchased it. I mean, it really doesn't owe me anything. I, I drove it as a commuter car for years. and. Um, of those 327,000 miles on it, I think I put on a little more than 125 on my own. So I'm just going to keep driving it and, and hope it survives the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune.